Hi, I'm Jody and say what? I want to start to record the complete Elpic course free for everyone, for whoever wants to learn, not for everyone, only for people who are interested in studying Linux. What's the story? Elpic comes from Linux Professional Institute. And there is one C here, which is certificate. In older times and still nowadays, we have different certificates which can prove that you know Linux. One comes from Red Hat. One comes from SUSE. But the point is, these certificates are based on their own distributions. When you have Red Hat Certificate Engineer Certificate or something like this, RHCL, RHCE. Let me see. RHCE. Red Hat Certificate Engineer. When you have RHCE, it proves that you know the Red Hat Linux. When you have SUSE's certificate, it shows that you know SUSE Linux. This is one problem. There are distro specific. Another problem is when you have these certificates, they are very, very in-depth. It's difficult to get Red Hat certificate. And when you have it, it needs detailed understanding or at least knowledge or memorizing of different small parts that nobody uses in daily life. Linux Professional Institute started its works to answer to these two questions. First, they create the LPIC certificate and said this is not bound to one specific distro. It works on many distros which are common among servers. It covers Debian concepts and it covers RPM-based covers. If you don't know about this, we will see them later. This was one part. And second, it says we'll create levels. We have LPIC level 1, LPIC level 2, LPIC level 3, and each of these are talking about some specific aspects of Linux. So you don't need to know a lot of stuff about corners of the Linux systems to get your certificate. Another good idea was they are surveying from real world system administrators and people who use Linux on a daily basis and see what they need and include it in their uh, different levels. So when you have LPIC 1, your employee will know that you know the general stuff people need, people do on an everyday basis as a system administrator on Linux machines, even much more. If you are a, even a professional Linux user, you might not know many topics in LPIC 1. But in general, it's a very useful and nice certificate. Even if you don't want to get the certificate, if you review all the topics, you will know that, okay, I know enough about the Linux to claim be a, to be a professional system administrator, at least on technical level. Anyway, uh, here I'm going to talk about LPIC level one, which consists of two different objectives, 101 and 102. You need two different exams to get these certificates. Each exam will take 90 minutes and has 60 questions, multiple choice and fill in the blank questions. It's not difficult. If you are a general Linux user, you will see that you know most of these topics and you can guess some of them. They are not trying to be tricky about the answers or mislead you and check if you know this specific corner. They're trying to understand that if you can work on a Linux machine. As I said, there are two different objectives, this group, sorry, two different uh, exams, 101 and 102, and there is a version. Now we are speaking about version 5, which is shown as 101, 500, 102, 500. This shows you the version of the exam. So you have LPIC 1, exam 101, exam 102. Each of these two are covering different topics. In general, for the whole LPIC 1, you have, I believe, 10 topics. 
That will be topic 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, and 109, and 110. This exam covers these, and this exam covers these. It's a little bit confusing naming, because, for example, you are getting LPIC 1, so you are taking exam 102, and you are studying topic 106 or worse 1 101 101 or 102 it's a little bit confusing but never mind we will cover them all one by one these are the topics you should know for example for exam 101 you should know system architecture you have to have an understanding of your system determine and configure hardware settings this is a subtopic topic of 101 boot the system change run levels blah 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 topic 102 linux installation and package management these are all using rpms linux as a virtualization guest topic 103 geno and unix commands you should be able to work on the command line use filters for working with text create monitor and kill processes and lots of other things topic 104 devices linux file system file system hierarchy and this will give you exam 101 for exam 102 you have topic 105 shells and shell scripting so you should understand the shell how to script also for example on the second topic subtopic you should customize or write simple scripts 106 user interfaces and desktops 107 administrative tasks like automating system processes localization and this kind of stuff 108 essential system services system time system logging other stuff mail 109 networking fundamentals and at the la at the end security which will grant you exam 102 if you have a linux system it is great if you don't, it is good to have one because it's better to practice. Here we are not going just to get the certificate. We are going to learn Linux. For many people, they study this and they watch these videos not to get the certificate, but to make sure that you know whatever a good system admin knows about Linux. If you have a Linux machine which is running a Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, whatever, it is good. Even if you are working with some thing like Arch system, Gento system, whatever, still it's good. But in different topics, you should learn how to use Debian packages and RPM packages. These includes Ubuntu, Debian, and many others. This includes Red Hat, Rocky Linux, Fedora, and many others. So it's very good if you install both of these and be able to work with them so i suggest installing a virtual machine virtual machines if you don't know them they work like a program you just run the virtual machine program on your computer whatever os you has you have right and then when you create a virtual machine it will give you a window which works like a separated computer you can mount an ISO file from a Linux and install it here. And in this window, you will have a separate computer which is running whatever you've installed. If you are using Windows, Macs with Intel chipsets, older Macs, and Windows, Linux, and Mac, older Macs, I suggest installing VirtualBox. It's a free software. You can just download it and install it. Very easy to work with. And if you are on a M1 chip max, you can install UTM. So get UTM.app or UTM virtual machine. This is you, UTM. And you can run your virtual machines on your M1 max. Unfortunately, still we don't have a virtual box for M1 chips. And you can use whatever suits you. You can go for VMware or whatever you want. These two are free, easy to use. I suggest installing Fedora, which is an RPM-based system, 
and uh, Ubuntu. You can go for whatever you want. You can go for Debian for instead of Ubuntu, or you can go for, uh, for example, Red Hat or Rocky Linux instead of the Fedora. In the next two videos, I will install Fedora in one, and then I will install uh, Ubuntu in another machine. I'm using a virtual machine on a Windows, the virtual box, and I will work here. Let's go for it.